Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and I run the blog lifefromtheviolasection.com where I share my favorite practice tips, general advice, and tech for musicians. Today we're going to look at a different app for musicians. This one is specifically a sheet music scanner. This app is called PlayScore 2 and it is available for Apple, Android, M1, and M2 chip computers and on the Windows Store as well. So PlayScore 2 advertises itself as the most accurate optical music recognition app. So it specifically says PlayScore 2 understands all the symbols of standard music notation and can play all kinds of sheet music and scores. And PlayScore 2 can read scores with systems of many staff, staff such as soprano, alto, tenor, bass, vocal scores, and chamber music, as well as piano music and songs. It also advertises that it can help you learn your part by listening to the MIDI of whatever music you scan, and it can also help you become a better sight reader by sight reading music and then listening to the MIDI. So basically, in this app, you can scan music or you can import music, and then once it's in there, you can listen to the MIDI, you can kind of manipulate the MIDI for whatever instrument, whatever transposition you want, and you can listen to it. If you subscribe to one of their plans, you can also export the file as either a PDF, a MIDI file, or a music XML file, which is what I am the most excited about. There are so many times where I need to just transpose music just a little bit and all I have is PDF. So either I need to find a differently transposed version or I need to write out the entire piece of music and just transpose it up a fifth or down a fifth if I'm going from treble clef music to alto clef violin music for a viola student. It's such tedious, really unnecessary work to just transpose down a fifth. So I'm hoping that this app will really, really help with that. It also advertises itself as kind of a music accompaniment app where you can scan in whatever company part you have and then use the MIDI that it generates to play along with kind of as a karaoke track, which I think is a really cool talking point. Now that we know what PlayScore 2 is all about, let's actually get it on my iPad and take a look at it. So let's open up PlayScore. This is called PlayScore 2, and the icon looks like this. I have tried a couple different songs in this so far, but I haven't spent too much time in this app, so it is pretty much still a first impression for me. So I have a couple songs that I've already imported. Um, in the free version, I do not think, yeah, you cannot import sheet music in the free version. You have to take a picture of it. So, so let's take a picture of Surprise Symphony. Okay, this is not a horizontal cop capture anymore, but we'll see what it does. Okay, so it is currently playing the sheet music. So once you take a picture or import the sheet music, it does automatically start playing a MIDI version of the sheet music. Let's listen to it. Oh, it didn't start from the beginning. Oh, this is the tempo control. Okay. Make it a little bit faster. Okay, it sounds like it didn't really slow down there, but we'll see if it travels down. It does. Okay. Now over here we can change what the MIDI sounds like. So I'll put this on viola. We'll just listen to the rest. Interesting. Okay. And does this crop? Oh. Okay. So we've got some helpful settings here that we can change. Are there... I'm a little bit confused about how this slidey thing works. Is there... Okay, so that, that just puts it up anyway. Okay. And, oh, didn't mean to do that. Okay. There's no, the crop button is faded, so I can't really use the crop button. 
there's one piece of music. Let's try a different one that I've scanned. This one is for piano. Let's see what the MIDI's on. It's on piano. And, oh, since there are two stops, it looks like you can change the MIDI for two stops. So let's try harpsichord for the second one and see exactly what this setting does. <laughs> okay, so the first MIDI controls the top line. Second MIDI controls the bottom line, the bass line. So we'll put that back to piano and listen to it again. And then we have the same settings up here as before. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not used to just tapping the music and hearing it play. So different for me. I only have the first page here. Um, recapture photo to play. Wonder if you can add in a second picture or not. Okay. So let's see what else is available here. Um, the store looks like it's all subscriptions. I was thinking that by store it might have some sheet music, but that's okay. Um, and then we cannot import anything because we're on the free version, but we can take pictures. Here's one that I believe it came imported with. Let's listen to how it does. Sets two. So good MIDI, at least with piano. The viola did sound a little funny, I think. Um, but good so far. Let's see what sharing options we have. So it looks like we can text it. We have all of our typical share functions. Um, let's see what happens if I try to upload this to Google Drive. Looks so it's a dot play score file. Interesting. So I just uploaded that to my drive. Let's see how it opens over there. Okay, so this is file, unsupported file type. I mean, I didn't expect to be able to play it in the app. What if I open it in, let's say, can we do four score? No. Okay. So probably the only app that you can open that in is play score, which makes total sense, but I just wanted to try it. Otherwise, I don't see many other capabilities in this free version. We do have a metronome option. Um, you can have a metronome in the whole time, which is very helpful if you're a bit confused about rhythm, if you're learning something. I think this free version would be very helpful for students, for those who learn music better when they know exactly what it sounds like, which I mean, is most of us, but um, this is very helpful if you just want to take a quick picture of your music, hear it, and also hear it with the metronome if you get a little bit confused about where the beat falls in whatever music that you're learning. Now let's take a look at the paid version. Okay, so I just upgraded to the professional year account. I did receive a code to get this for free just to try it out for my students and to review it online. So this is my first honest reaction and opinions, um, but I just wanted to be transparent about that. So the current subscription includes multiple pages, PDF scores, and music XML. The other subscription is the productivity version, capture and play multiple stabs and pages, but it looks like you cannot export to music XML, which is something that I'm very interested in in this app. Um, for a whole year, it's not too hefty of a price, so I like that. Now we can finally import PDFs. So let's find how about this one. It looks like this one might be scales. Okay. Let um, 
Let's see the MIDI. Oh, okay, so it thinks there are two parts. There should just be one part. This is for violin. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, so um, I did not hear any second MIDI in there, um, so I'm not quite sure why it was an option even, but in the settings, we don't really have anything new, just sampling and image, but I can't really reach those. Oh, there we go. Okay. So image, I think it changes how light or dark the printing is. Possibly, maybe not. I'll just put that on auto. I don't really know. Sampling. I'm not quite sure what that one does either. Now we do have the crop and mask settings, so you can drag this to crop however you'd like. And then um, I guess the mask can kind of hide things. And then um, if you have multiple pages, you can select them, reorder them, whatever you'd like to do. And then we also have the share feature and there are different ways that you can actually share it. So let's go over to one that I imported but forgot to screen record. <laughs> um, and we're going to export this as a music XML file and see what it looks like in my favorite um, music notation software, which is NoteFlight. It's not really a software, it's just a website, but that's what I like to use. So here's how it turned out. Looks like it has the notes correct. Um, it did put in a weird tie over there and it did not keep the different titles and um, different spacing and things like that. I did not check the boxes to keep the original spacing and things like that just because I wanted to see how it just does automatically. So now that we have this as an XML file, we can edit it however we'd like. So if I want to switch this to treble clef, which I don't need to because I also have the violin book. Um, I could do that just by going over to measure and treble clef. Now, anyone who reads treble clef can read this. And there are just a couple of weird slurs and I believe this five might be there if it's like the fifth exercise or something. And it also came up with this. But it's a pretty accurate transition into XML files. I have used NoteFlight um, with my piano, and I forget what kind of chord it is that you use to connect them, um, but I've played my piano and had NoteFlight transcribe it. The rhythms are really weird. I don't think my rhythms are that bad, <laughs> but it will do like weird triplet stuff and weird syncopation and things if you're not like 100% accurate. Um, and then other times I will try to import other XML files and sometimes it doesn't get the formatting quite right. This worked very well though, so that is really exciting. This is one of the main features that I'm excited about in PlayScore 2 because there are lots of times where I want to just quickly transpose something from treble clef to alto clef to use with a viola student because like they can't read treble clef yet and I have to sit on a flight and write the entire thing out note by note and that gets really tedious and time consuming. And this can really, really help if I just have a picture of what I want to transcribe, put it in here, export it, and then I can perfectly do that. That's very nice. So you can still take pictures, of course, and you can also import from Google Drive if you have that synced up with your files app. So I have lots and lots of stuff here. Let's just look at movie slash TV music. Go to Harry Potter, Fox the Phoenix. Open that in PlayScore. So this is one that I kind of edited. Um, it was an arrangement from a viola book, but uh, there's something about it that 
didn't work well with the student, so I changed it. Um, but it looks very nice in here. Actually, let's test something. I wrote this out in NoteFlight. So let's export it, put it back in NoteFlight. <laughs> Just see what happens. So start by importing XML or whatever file you have. We're doing this one. And then you can change lots of different things. I'm just going to keep it with the default, just to see what it does. And get rid of the keyboard. Now let's, let's see if I can split screen these two apps. I can, perfect. So it did not keep some of the original articulations like these breath marks or the bowing directions. It did keep the slurs, but the slurs are a little odd. They don't look perfect. Not sure where this two came from. <laughs> um, so overall, like that's, that's okay. No fault of play score too, as, as far as I can think. It's just NoteFlight is always a little bit weird when you import um, XML files. Um, so you can sort by just recent titles or composers. Would be nice if there was some kind of folder system or list version because it's a little difficult to read the titles with the music right behind it. Um, I mean, I can do it, but I'm very used to four scores organization system where it's a whole list and it's very searchable. But we do have a search bar right here, so let's see how it does. ABCs of Viola came right up, and let's try Hungarian Dances. Oh. Yep, comes right up. So as long as you've got the title that you want, then you'll be able to search and find it right away. I want to test its actual abilities as a scanner because I know when I scan music, usually on my phone, I like to use TurboScan because it has lots of different options to make it look like a very fresh professional scan. Um, whereas, you know, if you just take a picture of music, it's not going to look perfect. There might be some shadows and things. So I just downloaded PlaySCORE on my phone. Let's see what kind of options there are. I'm doing this test on my phone because it has a better camera than the iPad. And I find a lot of pictures I take on my iPad are just kind of blurry. I don't know. I know the iPad has like a good camera, but I never use the camera on there. So I just took a picture of some piano music that I have up and let's look at some cropping options. So I can drag it up and down, but I can't find a way to drag it left and right and I can't really like zoom in. Nothing's happening. I can add a mask. I'm not entirely sure what the mask is for. Um, So it looks like there aren't all that many options when it comes to actually editing your scan. So I feel like the quality of the scan isn't quite the focus of this app, even though the website describes it as like a really great sheet music scanner and reading app, like it processes the sheet music in the scan very, very nicely, but it doesn't mean that if you use this to scan it and take a picture, it's not going to give you the highest quality result for you to read off of. So I personally recommend if you have a subscription or if you want to pay for this subscription, then do it in an app like TurboScan where you can, hello, <laughs> where it automatically finds it and it should take it, use the flash, and then I can crop it like this. And it looks like a high quality scan. You can also change how light or dark the ink is. That's especially helpful if you accidentally get a little bit of a reflection from the page, like from the opposite side of the page. So um, you can also rotate it, all those kinds of things. So something like this is gonna be a higher quality option to actually get your scan. And then if you want to use play score to listen to the MIDI or to export it to an XML file, then that is where that app really excels. All right, thank you for taking a look at PlayScore 2 with me. This was my first impression, my first try through in the free version and the paid version. I'm really excited to export PDFs to music XML files so that I can easily just transpose, easily just change little things if I need to about music that I give to my students. It's going to be 
so, so helpful. I also really like the accompaniment feature and I might recommend this app to students who really need to listen to everything that they learn so they can just take a picture of their music and then hear it right back to them. Especially if recordings are hard to find on the internet. Usually I'll just send a recording, but with this, it, it will tell you exactly what it's like. So I'm excited to use this app even more if I discover anything else or um, decide to use it in a slightly different way, I will be sure to give you an update. But for now, those are just my first impressions of this app. I hope you enjoyed it. And if there are any apps that you would like me to try out, please let me know in the comments down below or on my Instagram. My Instagram is at life from the viola section. Same thing as my blog and YouTube channel here. So I post new videos almost every Sunday at noon Eastern time. So if you liked this video, please consider subscribing and I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.